also here back with one of your English stories. Uh, this story of course is from the lower classes, um, Harold the Hornbill by Ruskin Bond. Um, in classes 6, 7, 8, I don't know whichever class. In these lower classes we generally have the story, so today I should be doing that. Now, Ruskin Bond as you know was a very famous, uh, or is a famous rather, uh, into Anglican writer. He resides in the Himalayan foothills, uh, Missouri and all those places. And writes uh, very nice, uh, easy, lucid Chris, uh, children's literature. And literally in all the classes you can find some of the other stories uh, from Ruskin Bond. Definitely one at least you will find. Okay, so anyway, today we should do this. The story, Rehar the Hornbill by Ruskin Bond. Characters are Harold, of course. The Hornbill bird. His parents and his parents, the narrator who narrates the whole story, grandfather who is another character, and Aunt Ruby who comes from the end. So these are all basically the characters. Now let us move on with the text. Harold's mother, like all good humbles, was the most careful of wives. So she was the very um, careful and dutiful of wives, just like all good humble wives. His father was the most easygoing of husbands. He was a very relaxed kind of a character, very calm and quiet character, not a very agitative or very masculine kind of character. In January, long before the flame tree flowered, now flame tree refers to the Gulmohar tree in India. Okay, uh, why is it called the flame tree? Because when it flowers, the flowers are of red, orange um, and uh, yellow a bit and that whole thing gives it the appearance of being on fire. So that's why it is always referred to as the flame tree. You will find words like flaming, uh, flame tree, a blaze, all these used with reference to the Gulmohar tree. Why? Because um, the flowers that they blossom, when the flowers come up, they are of that appearance of, or give the appearance as if the tree is on fire. Just like you light a fire, there is a flame. Similarly, the flowers of the Gulmohar tree are of that same color, red, orange, um, yellow. So making it appear as if the tree is actually burning, it is on fire. So that is why it is referred to as the flame tree. The flame tree flowered, Harold's father took his wife into a great hole high in the tree trunk. So there's a hole in the tree trunk where he took his wife, where his father and his father's father had taken their brides at the same time every year. So it's a kind of a family tradition. His father's father, his father, Harold's father, all of them had taken their wives into this particular hole in the tree. So it, it proves that this tree is of course a very old and ancient tree. In this weather beaten hollow, generation upon generation of hornbills had been raised. In this weather beaten hollow, that is why just now I said it's an ancient tree, it's a very old kind of a tree. So that is why generation after generation hornbills had been raised here. They had been born here, they had been brought up and raised here. Harold's mother, like those before her, were enclosed within the hole by a sturdy wall of earth, sticks, and dung. So Harold's mother, she was enclosed in this hole. Of course, it's very uncomfortable for a bird like uh, a medium sized bird like uh, a hornbill, but still, somehow she was put in there and the uh, mouth of the hole was covered up with our uh, sticks and down. Cow down, as you know, it was uh, all this way used to fill up the hole. In this weather beaten hollow, <coughs> okay, Harold's father left a small hole in the center of this wall to enable him to communicate with his wife whenever he felt like a chat. So he had a small hole in between that uh, cemented up portion so that he could have a chat, he could have communication with his wife and uh, that small hole in the center was for that and of course for feeding her also. Wired up in an uncomfortable room, of course it's uncomfortable in an enclosed area if you put a bird in a cage for instance. Uh, it's You may think that it is enough but actually it is in a very uncomfortable state. So here she is more than uncomfortable because it is not even a cage, it's a very small enclosed hole in which she is put in. Harold's mother was a prisoner for over two months, which was more than two months that she was a prisoner. During this period an egg was laid and Harold was born. So during this period uh, when she was in that hole she had laid an egg and from that egg Harold had starved. In his naked boyhood, Harold was no beauty. That is, he did not look a very beautiful bird as a small, young, um, sized bird. He didn't look very beautiful. He was not a beautiful looking bird. His most promising feature was his flaming red bill. Flaming red bill means his beak, which was flaming red. Of course, a very strong red color was 
the color of his beak. That was the most striking feature of his body, entire body. Matching the blossoms of the flame tree, which was now ablaze, heralding the summer. Heralding means announcing the arrival of. Announcing the arrival of summer. So when the flowers come up on this blue mohar tree or this flame tree, it means that summer is approaching. Okay, so it's a sign that summer is approaching. So the blossoms of the tree were ablaze. Just as I told you, ablaze means it has fully blossomed the flowers, giving it the appearance of being on fire. This red color of the flower matched up with the red color of Harold's beak. He had a stomach that could never be filled. In spite of the best efforts of his parents, who brought him pieces of jackfruit and berries from the banyan tree. So he had a kind of unlimited hunger. His stomach could never be satisfied. Okay, they tried his best, their best, their parents, to satisfy his hunger. They brought him pieces of jackfruit, berries and such other things from the nearby trees, uh, banyan tree and others. But unfortunately, his hunger refused to be satisfied. As he grew bigger, the room became more cramped and one day his mother burst through the wall, spread out her wings and sailed over the treetops. So one day when uh, the space became too uncomfortable for both of them, she just broke open the wall and she flew out. Spread her wings and sailed over the treetops. Her husband was delighted, uh, sorry, her husband was glad to see her about. Her husband was happy that uh, her, his mate has returned or his wife has returned, so he was very happy. He played with her, expressing his delight, that is expressing his happiness, with deep gurgles and throaty chuckles. So laughter in the form of throaty chuckles. The, the words, the, the utterance of his was throaty chuckles. From the throat, some noises were made by him. Gurgling sound, happy sound, chirping sound were made by Harold's father. Then they repaired the wall of the nursery so that Harold would not fall, fall out. So after his wife had come out, Harold and Harold's father and his mother, they both did one thing. They repaired the wall of the uh, hole so that Harold would not fall out of it. Now, Harold was quite happy in his cell. Cell means like a prisoner. Prisoner in a cell. Cell we generally associate with a prisoner, the prison where he is, the small uh, chamber in which a prisoner is kept, that is referred to as cell. Here also, Harold is confined in that small kind of a hole, so in that small cell. And felt no urge for freedom, he did not feel the urge to be free. He was putting on weight and a philosophy of his own. So he was gradually becoming fatter, he was putting on weight and he was having a philosophy of his own. Then something happened to change the course of his life. Then suddenly something happened strange which uh, affected his life. One afternoon he was awakened from his siesta by a loud thumping on the wall. One afternoon what happened? He was awakened. He was disturbed from his siesta. Now siesta is a small midday nap. Okay, some people take this nap. Harold also was accustomed to taking this nap. So he was having this afternoon nap by a loud thumping on the wall. There was a loud thumping on the wall. A sound quite different from that made by his parents. He uh, suddenly felt that this sound is quite different from that which is made by my parents. It's not the same which is made by my parents. Soon the wall gave away and there was something large and yellow and furry staring at him. And when the wall gave away, when the wall broke, what happened? He saw there was something large, yellow and furry. It was full of fur and it was staring at him and was looking at him. Not his parents' bills, he did not recognize the bills, the long bills of his parents. He did not recognize it because it was not there. It was not a bill, it was a furry creature. But the hungry eyes of a civet cat, and what he saw actually were the eyes of a civet cat. Civet cat, if you know, it's a small kind of a cat of the cat family living on the trees, feeding on small uh, birds, animals, eggs, and all. So um, you can see it in the picture I have provided. Before Harold could be seized, the seize means before the civet cat could take hold of the young bird, Harold. His parents flew at the cat, both roaring lustily and striking out with their great bills, the big bills which the horn bills have. With that, they were poking at him. So before he could get hold of Harold, they had already attacked him, both his, uh, his parents. In the ensuing melee, ensuing melee in the gradual confusion, ensuing means after that whatever confusion, all this uh, fight, uh, 
and uh, striking between the civet cat and the hornbills in this many in this confusion in this uh, struggle Harold tumbled out of his nest and landed on our garden path he landed on the garden path of the narrator before the cat or any predator could get to him grandfather picked him up and took him to the sanctuary of the veranda so before any predator predator means any hunting creature uh, could get hold of it or the civet cat or anyone else could get hold of it uh, grandfather picked up harold and took him to the sanctuary of the veranda to the safety of the veranda harold had lost some wing feathers and did not like as though look as though he would be able to survive on his own so we made an enclosure for him on our front veranda so some wing feathers he had lost and he did not look as if he would survive on his own so what they did was they made a small enclosure for him a small uh, kind of a you can call it a cage or a place for, to, for him to live in the front veranda on the front veranda they made him a small space a cage like structure for him to stay grandfather and i took over the duties of his parents that means they took over the duties of looking after him they were now now like his parents um, grandfather and the narrator they were now his parents because uh, the bird's parents were now not going to look after him so they now took up the duty grandfather and the narrator harold had a simple outlook and once he had got over some early attacks of nerves he began to welcome the approach of people Had a simple outlook means Harold had a very simple philosophy. He was not a very complicated kind of a bird, very complex kind of a bird. It's a very simple bird. Okay. Once he had got over some early attacks of nerves. The early attacks of nerves means uh, nervousness. Of course, he is in a new environment, the new place in the veranda, new people. Uh, these are not my parents. They are some other human beings, some creatures. So all this nervousness was at first very difficult for him to digest. But after he had got over this nervousness, that is what is referred to early attacks of nerves. That means early attacks of nerves means early nervousness. Okay, you buy uh, uh, suppose you buy a puppy or a kitten and you bring it in. So the first day, first few days at least, it is very nervous. It is very afraid to come to you. But later on, it will once it is uh, adapted to you. and it becomes very faithful it becomes uh, it loves you very much and it will always be with you but the first few uh, days and weeks it will be full of nervousness here also have a full of nervousness all the attacks of nerves after that he began to welcome the approach of people after that he got used to people when people would come he would welcome them kind of grandfather and i went to the arrival of food whenever he saw grandfather or the narrator coming he thought okay these people are coming they are going to bring me food these are my food suppliers and he greeted us with cranking with crank craning neck he would crane his neck that means he would put his neck forward like a crane he would put his neck out quickly open bill shaking open bill he would open his long bill that the hornbill said we open his bill and a loud croaking ka ka ki ki he would announce that ka ka ki ki would be his a uh, welcoming uh, address to these people to the grandfather and to the narrator you welcome them okay come on give me food fruit insect or animal food and green leaves were all welcome whatever they gave him whether it is fruit insect animal food even green leaves that all he took happily we soon dispensed with the enclosure but harold made no effort to go away after a bit uh, uh, a few weeks okay after a few weeks what happened they said no this enclosure is no longer needed we will do away with it let him be free so that he can fly away but harold made no effort to go away harold said no i'm not going to go away from here i'm going to stay here he had difficulty flying that fall from the tree in the uh, young age had injured him so he had difficulty flying in fact he asserted his tenancy rights at least as far as the veranda was concerned Now tenancy rights means being a tenant. Tenant means someone who uh, pays rent and stays at a particular place. You rent a room somewhere. The room belongs to someone else. Okay, you say okay for one month I'm going to stay here. I'll pay you this much amount of money. So that is the rent we you pay. You are the tenant. The person whose house it is, he is the owner. So here the owners were actually the narrator, the grandfather and all. But here who is the tenant? Harold, because he was given a place to stay in the veranda, so he asserted his tenancy rights, as if he is uh, aware of the law and saying that no, this is my right. I have been uh, kept here for long, so this is my right. I will stay here. So this veranda, he asserted his tenancy rights. Asserted means forcefully put in uh, to place. 
Okay, forcefully put into place, he asserted his tenancy rights. That I am a tenant, I have my rights, so that tenancy rights. At least as far as the veranda was concerned. So at least in case of the veranda, he did this. One afternoon, a veranda party was suddenly and alarmingly convulsed by a flash of black and white and noisy flapping. What is this uh, um, noisy flapping? It is the flapping of wings. Flapping means the sound made by the wings. What was the color? Black and white. There was a flash of it. Flash of it means suddenly uh, something went around. Alarming means everyone was afraid. What is this? This is flying through the middle of the garden party. Okay, convulsed. Everyone was afraid and shocked because it is sudden. And behold, and then it was revealed. Behold means here the revelation. What is this revealed? The last and only loaf of bread had been seized and carried off to his porch near the city. So it was actually Harold who had taken the last piece of bread or the loaf of bread and gone to his porch near the city to have it as his food. So that's the mischief that he has done. Harold was not beautiful by Hollywood standards. So here he is as if compared to an actor or an actress saying that he is not uh, very uh, nice or good in appearance just like any Hollywood actors or actresses. He had a small body and a large head, but he was good-natured and friendly, and he remained on good terms with most members of the household during his lifetime of 12 years. That means, for a total of 12 years, he stayed with the narrator and his family, and during this time, he was good-natured and a friendly bird, number one. Number two, he had a small body, a large head. Okay, he remained on good terms, that is, he had good terms with most of the members of the household, except for Aunt Ruby, we will see that later on. But other than that, everyone, he had good relations. Harold's best friends were those who fed him. And he was willing even to share his food with us. So grandfather and the narrator were his best friends. Why? They were offering him food. And he was in fact ready to share his food with them. With grandfather and the narrator. Because they gave him food. Sometimes trying to feed me with his great beak. He would try to feed the narrator with his big beak that he had. When I turned down his offers of beetles and similar delicacies, I did occasionally share a banana with him. Of course, the narrator couldn't eat uh, beetles or other such delicacies. He just jokes and says such delicious items like beetles or small other insects. I couldn't have all those nice things. Uh, of course, I sometimes shared a banana with him. That I sometimes did. But these things are not palatable to me, so I didn't do that. I uh, have them. Eating was a serious business for Harold, and if there was any delay at meal times, he would summon me with the raucous barks and vigorous bangs of his bill on the woodwork of the kitchen window. So it was a very serious business. Eating is very serious for him. Uh, there's no negligence in that regard. Okay. And if there was any delay in meal times, if there was anyone got late somehow in feeding him, he would summon me. Summon me means he would call me. How? With raucous barks, very loud and rough barks of voice or calls and vigorous bangs of his bill on the woodwork of the kitchen window. On the kitchen window which is made up of wood, he would bang his hard bill or the beak that he had. He would bang it hardly, knocking. Just as we knock on the door, he would knock on the kitchen window, on the wooden kitchen window or he would call out very loudly and very raucous barks he would give with his throat. Having no family, profession or religion, Harold gave much time and thought to his personal appearance. He did not, of course, have any family. He's all a known profession, of course, not a religion, to, of course, not a bird doesn't have a religion. Harold gave much time and thought to his personal appearance. So the only job left for him was to eat, and the other job was to look after his appearance. He carried a roche pot on his person and used it very skillfully as an item of his morning toilet. So what he carried is, uh, if you have seen a uh, hornbill, at the end of the tail, there's a small kind of a yellowish pot in which, kind of a gland actually it is, and here he would dip his um, beak or bill, and with that he would paint himself yellow. So it was a part of his morning toilet, but the morning toilet means morning appearance and dressing up. So just as uh, people get ready to dress up and go to work or women get ready to go to some place, similarly in the early morning after just as we brush our teeth and prepare, uh, get ready to go to school, similarly here also early morning he would dress himself up by coloring himself up with that particular uh, color, yellowish color from that rouge pot. Okay, so as I was saying, 
uh, the rouge pot, that coloring pot. What it is? It is a gland. Here it is written. The, this rouge pot was a small gland situated above the roots of his scale feathers. It produced a rich yellow fluid. Harold would dip into his rouge pot from time to time and then rub the color over his feathers and the back of his neck. So that is what that is how he uh, dressed up. That is how he uh, kind of had his makeup, as you may say. So from that rouge pot, he would dip his uh, bill into it, and from there in, he would apply this yellowish color over his feathers and at the back of the neck. It would come off on my hands whenever I touched it, and as a result, sometimes what happens with paint also sometimes when it is the paint is not yet dried up totally, we put our hand and the paint comes off on our hands. Similarly, in this case also, when Harold's uh, uh, color, the yellow color on his uh, feathers or on his uh, uh, neck, whenever it was wet and the narrator maybe has touched his feathers, the color would come off on my hands. Come off on my hands means it would define his hands. Harold would toy with anything bright or glittering, often swallowing it afterwards. Anything bright or anything glittering that is shiny, he would be attracted to it, he would play with it and swallow it afterwards. He loved bananas and dates and balls of boiled rice. I think you know bananas, dates are um, that uh, dry fruit which we have balls of uh, boiled rice. I would throw in the rice balls and he would catch them in his beak, toss them in the air and let them drop into his open mouth. And that is what he used to do, he used to act like a juggler. He used to catch them, throw them up into the air and into his open mouth he would let them fall. He perfected this trick of catching things and in time I taught him to catch a tennis ball thrown with some force from a distance of 15 yards. So this habit of catching was uh, uh, further uh, practiced and further uh, developed by the narrator by making Harold catch a tennis ball which he threw from a distance of 15 yards uh, with some force, not extreme force, but some force. He would catch that ball. He would have made a great baseball catcher or an excellent slip fielder. In case of baseball, he said he would have been a baseball catcher, good baseball catcher in case of cricket, an excellent slip fielder. On one occasion, he seized a rupee coin from me. A week's pocket money in those days. So one rupee coin suddenly one day he snatched it from the narrator. And uh, that one rupee was in those days, uh, it was one week's pocket money for the narrator. So he took it and swallowed it neatly. Swallowed it neatly means just swallowed it in. Only once did he really misbehave. He was otherwise, as it is said, he is a very good natured bird. Only once he misbehaved. What he did? That was when he removed a lighted cigar from the hand of an American cousin who was visiting us. An American cousin was visiting them. He had a lighted cigar in his hand and Harold took it from his fingers. Harold swallowed the cigar. It was a moving experience for Harold and an unnerving one for our guest. And Harold swallowed it. Of course, it had great reactions for Harold. Of course, if you uh, swallow a cigar, which is made up of tobacco, you will have different kinds of uh, uh, disturbances. And that is exactly what he said. A moving experience for Harold. It was a very uh, strong experience for Harold. And unnerving one for our guest. Our guest was very unnerved. He was shocked. What is this bird? Suddenly he comes in, takes a lighted cigar, swallows it. What kind of bird is this? So he was very unnerved. He was very shocked. Although Harold never seemed to drink any water, he loved the rain. So he loved the rain very much. And uh, we always knew when it was going to rain because Harold would start chuckling to himself about an hour before the first raindrops fell. So he was like a weather reporting person. Uh, the moment he starts chuckling to himself or laughing to himself or gurgling to himself, what would happen? They realized that very soon it is going to rain and in about an hour or so, it would start to rain. So he was kind of that weather forecast he used to give with his uh, chakri. This used to irritate Aunt Ruby. This is the last character, this is Aunt Ruby, the aunt of the narrator. She used to be very irritated by him, irritated by his chakri. She was always being caught in the rain. She was always caught in the rain. That means she was always getting wet in the rain. Harold would be chuckling when she left the house. And when she returned, drenched to the skin, he would be in fits of laughter. So Harold would be chuckling when she left the house. So when she is leaving the house, he would be chuckling. So that was the signal that she should have taken an umbrella. The narrator and grandfather knew. 
Aunt Ruby didn't know that, so she would go out normally. She would hear that he is chuckling, Harold is chuckling, and she would go out. But then, when uh, later on it would rain, and she would be totally drenched to the skin. That means, that means she would be totally wet. Okay, drenched to the skin means being totally wet. She would be totally wet because she had no umbrella. She took no umbrella with her. So the rain drenched to the skin. That means the clothes would be sticking to her skin. He would be in fits of laughter and seeing her in this state, Harold would be shaking in laughter. That is why fits of laughter. As storm clouds would gather and gusts of wind would shake the banana trees, Harold would get very excited and his chuckle would change to an eerie whistle. As the storm clouds would gather, gust of wind would start blowing and the banana trees, you know, big banana leaves, they would start moving. Harold would get very excited and his chuckle would change into an airy whistle, a strange kind of whistle it would be. Wee hee, wee hee, he would scream. And then as the first drops of rain hit the veranda steps and the scent of the fresh earth passed through the house, he would start roaring with pleasure. So then he would scream out in that wee hee, wee hee, like that, he would stop. And then the first drops of rain hit the steps and the scent of the fresh earth, which is bathed by the rain, when that scent of the earth would come in, into the house, he would start roaring with pleasure. He would, there would be an expression of happiness. He would be full of pleasure, he would be full of happiness for it. The wind would carry the rain into the veranda and Harold would spread out his wings and dance, tumbling about like a circus clown. So just as the circus clown behaves idiotically, he just uh, uh, tumbles about and jumps and takes, uh, uh, makes sounds all and this and that, Harold also would do the same. He would spread out his wings when the wind would carry the rain into the veranda. When the wind would make the rain come into the veranda, he would spread out his wings and dance there like a joker or a clown. My grandparents and I would come out of the veranda and share his happiness. We also love to see this happy bird in this happy uh, manner. So they would all come out, grandfather, grandmother, the narrator they would all come out and watch him uh, do all these antiques that he did. Many years later, I still miss Harold's uh, raucous bark and the banging of his great bill. Now many years have passed, he's already dead. Harold, I still miss, the narrator says, I still miss his raucous bark, strong barking uh, cry that he used to give. The banging of his great bills and banging on the wooden uh, kitchen uh, window. He misses that. If there is a heaven for good horn bills, I sincerely hope he is getting all the summer showers he could wish for and plenty of tennis balls to catch. And the writer, the narrator hopes that if there is a place called good heaven or a place like heaven for good birds like uh, Harold, then probably he is enjoying all these happy showers.